So now you've got a home-based business that's making you a small, modest revenue stream, and I will teach you what you need to make it explode, to grow in a short time, in order of magnitude, faster, hard. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing that in this video, because this video is going to be just a little bit heavier. So I know it's been a little while since I talked about 3D printing and businesses and how to make money and some of you have been wanting to hear the second part of that and I'm sorry for the delay. There were a couple of reasons for it. One, I wanted people who just saw that video to get a chance to see what other stuff I do. I had other things that I wanted to talk about but also this is a difficult topic to breach. I, I kind of don't want to talk about this with you guys because this is going to be super heavy. You know, I've, I've got a picture on my wall of the success iceberg illusion that shows that while you may see the tip of the iceberg and think that that's what success is, what's lurking underneath the water is a lot of work and effort and failure. And today we're going to be spending a lot of time in that water. Before we go forward, let's look back real fast. In the last video, I talked about what you could do to make your passion for 3D printing or really anything into a business. And it's to have that passion, to get motivated to make money with it, to fail early and fail cheap as best you can, then strike oil, find that thing that really is, allows you to, what people want to buy from you really, and then take that passion and turn it into a habit by just always turning that crank. And this is kind of where I was at the beginning of this year. I'd been turning that crank for a while and it wasn't anything I stressed about or really tried to do. I just kind of enjoyed myself and, and let things go at a, at a moderate pace. But I wasn't really successful in what I was doing. It was just a hobby, a side thing, a fun thing. But I did wish that it could be successful. I wanted to be out there flying. And I, I mentioned that because Steve Harvey, in a, in a little talk that he did between takes on The Family Feud, talked about how every successful person he's ever met had to take a leap, had to take a jump, that they would be standing on a cliff and watching people fly, and that they would want to be a part of that and that they'd have to jump. But when you jump, you're gonna fall and you're gonna crash and it's going to be difficult and eventually you're going to jump and you're going to catch it and you're going to fly. Well, that's not the way it was for me. I was standing on that cliff, sure, I was looking peop at people fly, yeah, but I didn't jump. The ground fell out from underneath me. I was working a job as a software developer. I really wanted to switch careers because I was starting to get burnt out on that and I wanted to use my degree and get back into education. And this is when the next step in our step, what are we at? Step six happened for me. I moved to a different town, moved my family eventually to a different town after eight months of commuting back and forth. Uh, on just a weekend to spend time with my family, I finally moved them out here. And then three months after that, that job just disappeared on us. And on top of that, we had just welcomed the newest member of our family. And it was wonderful to have the time at home to spend with her and help mom convalesce. But yeah, I was desperate. I had no confidence left for anything. Except for this, this 3D printing thing that I was doing. This was the one thing that I could do that I felt like I could be successful at, but it wasn't paying the bills. It wasn't making things work out. We went on support. We went on, you know, whatever we could just to get by. And it was humbling. It was humiliating. We were desperate. So this next step is, is basically the same as the turning the passion into a habit step of before, but with desperation. Call it grit, call it determination, call it persistence, call it what you will. The idea is that 
basically I had to learn more. I had to step up my game. I had to go to classes. I had to make contacts. I had to get out of my comfort zone and meet people who would help me move my business forward. I opened up Patreon. I, I started writing curriculums. I started writing more books. Uh, I started trying to sell 3D printer kits and that went <laughs> not great. Um, I ran a Kickstarter and that went successful and actually helped me get by for a couple of months. Uh, but all of these things were just me trying whatever I could, throwing it against a wall and seeing what sticks. The last step of this process, I'm not quite sure I know for sure, but here's what I think it is. Now, when I say find your first 1,000, I don't mean $1,000. I mean 1,000 people who will support what you do. Now, 1,000 is, is kind of a fuzzy number. I think the 1,000 number relates to if you are producing something that people can buy, books or, or products, finding 1,000 people who will buy whatever you produce every time you produce something, and then keeping on producing something is a way to survive. But on YouTube, it might be your first million. Million subscribers is really what you need to, to level things out. But, you know, YouTube, production, whatever it is, you need to get that stable base of people supporting you and helping you get up and running. Now, I'm not there yet. I'm still working on it. And these videos and, and listening to you guys, as well as trying whatever I can, is really my only path forward. But besides that, I really don't know what the path forward is. I have to admit that I'm not here yet. And all I can do is, is keep working, keep turning that crank and hoping that something will come out of it. Like I said, we are, we're playing in the waters here. You're, you're getting a look at the, uh, at the failures and, and troubles that come that looks like success. But you know what? I'm not gonna worry about that anymore. This is the only peak you guys get behind the curtain. From now on, you guys get nothing but the tip of the iceberg of success. The point is, I don't want to discourage anybody from following their dreams and trying this out and making this work. It's, it's exciting. And in my case, it's the only path going forward. But I feel like everybody should be willing and able to follow their dreams. But you gotta realize going in that if you really wanna grab hold of the dragon's tail, Dragons bite, and things might not go for you as well as you want, but I encourage you to try it anyways. Now, that's not all I have on the topic of entrepreneurship or starting a business. I could talk more specifics with you guys, things that I'm trying to do, and, and maybe we could try an experiment together, but do you want to hear that? Would you guys follow that? Would that matter to you? If it is, if that's what you want to hear, go ahead and say in the comments, hey, tell me more about entrepreneurship. Otherwise, let's just talk about 3D printing and talk about cool projects that we're working on and cool projects that you could do if that's what you want to hear. So just say in the comments, yeah, guys, this is too heavy. Joe, just go back to, to the cool stuff and I will do so. I'd like to hear from you guys what you want to do. But as always, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing, but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer, but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon. Best revenue stream, and I will teach you what you need to make it explode, to grow in a short time, in order of magnitude. Faster, harder, better, stronger, everything you want, all the stuff. Let's just, because I'm cutting myself off before this point.